Hi, I'm Elaine Sheff, Clinical Herbalist and Co-Director of Green Path Herbs School. Today, I'd like to share a recipe from my new book, Naked, Botanical Recipes for Vibrant Skin and Healthy Hair. It's a vitamin C serum. I actually think it's one of the single most important things you can do for your skin. I also think it's the most important body care product you can make at home, and it's easy and inexpensive to do. First, I just want to take a minute to tell you how this book came to be. When I graduated from herb school over 20 years ago, there weren't many jobs for herbalists, so I made my own. My husband, John Goikovich, and I opened an herb store, Meadow Sweet Herbs, in Missoula, Montana, and we owned that store for over 18 years. My book, Naked, is a compilation of many of the body care recipes I created over the years, as well as some really awesome new ones. We now own Green Path Herbs School, and part of the year I have the opportunity to write. I offer this recipe to you as a celebration of the beauty of the human body, which I am deeply in awe of. So what is a skin serum? A skincare product that has a high concentration of active ingredients. These can be things like vitamin C or vitamin E, precious essential oils, antioxidant herbs, small amounts of healing fixed oils, including sea buckthorn, borage, avocado, and rosehip seed oil, to name a few. So vitamin C serum. Vitamin C is one of the very best nutrients we can apply to our skin. Prolonged, consistent use of vitamin C serum will cause the body to produce more collagen. Collagen is the main structural protein found in the skin and it is essential for skin repair after injury. When using this serum, skin will likely look plumper, more moisturized, tighter, and less wrinkled. The serum is valuable for lightening dark spots on, on the skin and helping to heal acne and scars. It's an antioxidant as well, so it helps protect the skin from free radical damage. Vitamin C is available both in water-soluble forms as ascorbic acid or L-ascorbic acid. The fat-soluble form of vitamin C is called ascorbopalmitate. It's also known as vitamin C ester, not to be confused with ester C. A 2002 study by the Mayo Clinic suggests that although ascorbopalmitate is more stable in body care products, it's very unstable when exposed to the sun and it can actually cause massive free radical damage. So I suggest avoiding ascorbyl palmitate use in body care products. Ascorbic acid is better absorbed through the skin and although it's less stable, making it more difficult to work with, it's far safer. That's why I think making your own vitamin C serum is so important. It's also, like I said, inexpensive and easy to make. So let's get started. Ingredients. The first thing you'll need is vitamin C powder, of course, and like I said, you'll either want ascorbic acid or L-ascorbic acid for that, which is the water-soluble form of vitamin C. I got this bulk at a store here in town. You can also use it from a capsule if you prefer or if that's what you have access to. And what I did is I ground mine up a little bit finer just so it would um, dissolve a little bit easier in the, uh, in the serum. So, uh, and to do that, I just used a coffee grinder. And you wanna make sure you don't get it hot. So I just ground it very slowly and gently. So it's a little bit finer. Then we have vegetable glycerin, which is right here. I like to use it in a pump. I find it just, it's really easy to um, use that way. And you wanna make sure you get vegetable glycerin, not animal or synthetic glycerin, which is made using petroleum products green tea leaves, and here I have some beautiful whole or organic green tea, which is much better in my opinion than the uh, tea bags, so I would get it bulk. And distilled water or just regular tap water. You're gonna boil it, so you could use either one or filtered water, whichever works. And then vitamin E as well. And you don't have to use vitamin E if you don't want to, but um, it adds, it's another antioxidant, so it adds more stability to the formula and it also uh, is really good for the skin. 
So if you're going to use a vitamin E, make sure that you have a natural source, uh, which would be like a D alpha tocopherol as opposed to DL alpha tocopherol, which is a synthetic form of vitamin E. And the other thing I'll say about vitamin E is I would use a water soluble form. And that's a little harder to find, but um, if you use an oil soluble form of vitamin E, it won't really mix into your product. You'll also need measuring spoons, a strainer, a couple dark glass bottles with tight fitting lids or sprayer. And I have this sprayer here, which um, this is what I like to apply it with. And that's nice because it just sprays right on the skin. You can spray it on the face or anywhere on the body that you want pH strips. And the pH strips, these I got at from a, um, a homebrew supply store here in town. And they're very specific. So um, because pH is a, there's a wide range of pH and you want a very uh, specific pH, you want it to be uh, between 3.0 and 3.5. And so these pH strips that I got measure from 2.8 to 4.4. So it's a narrow range and that helps us be really specific about the pH. You also want to label your products always, and a small bowl and a spoon can be helpful if you, if you choose to mix with those. So the first thing that you do is you make a strong infusion, infusion of your green tea by first boiling water. So let's get started with our recipe. The first thing you want to do is make a strong infusion of your green tea by first boiling the water. Here I've boiled about a cup and a half of water and then I've measured it to just one cup of boiling water. I'm going to take my green tea and pour it into, and this is a pint canning jar, and then I'm just going to pour my boiling water over the top. So I don't boil the tea leaves and um, this is a quarter ounce of, of herb per cup of water. So it's a nice strong infusion. It's a medicinal strength infusion of tea. Then we're going to let that steep for two hours and then we'll strain it. Okay, so we've let our tea steep for two hours and it's actually to the point now which is really important where it's cool because you don't want to add vitamin C to a hot liquid. You'll just, you'll destroy it. So we're going to strain it out now and I have this nice little strainer that's stainless steel, which I really like to use glass and stainless steel for my formulas. And you'll see it's just this beautiful, rich, kind of greenish golden color, the tea. Now this is more tea than you'll need for this recipe. And what I like to do is I like to just put it in um, ice cube trays and put it in the freezer. And then next time you make your recipe, you have extra tea right there and you can just um, avoid that, that step. And again, let it get to room temperature, the frozen tea as well. So you're going to be mixing everything together at room temperature. Now what I like to do is I like to use, we're going to do a one ounce of um, the formula for our blend here. And I like to just use a one ounce bottle. And so uh, what I'll do is I'll pour, and I don't want to fill it quite all the way full because I need to leave room for the other ingredients. So I fill it about just a little bit below where it's, the bottle starts to curve up. So I'll put my tea in there. You can also just measure this into a, a bowl and just measure an ounce. If you have a um, measuring cup that'll measure an ounce, that totally works too. So you take your one ounce of green tea and you mix it with one half a teaspoon of vegetable glycerin. And this vegetable glycerin um, is really wonderful for the skin. It's just an excellent formula for the skin. So it's very hydrating and um, very nourishing for the skin. So I'm just going to pump it out. And we want a half a teaspoon. Whoa and we'll just pour that right in. Now what I have found personally is that uh, this is the perfect amount that I like. You can add more vegetable glycerin if you want to and it's a little bit more hydrating, but it tends to start to get sticky. And so to prevent the stickiness, I find about a half a teaspoon works. But like I said, you can play with it yourself and come up with uh, whatever works the best for you. So then I like to shake that up really well 
And then you can add um, your vitamin E if you choose to. And if you do that, you would add about three fourths of a teaspoon of vitamin E. And then you're gonna add, and then uh, this is called, generally I call this our antioxidant blend, those three things. And so um, then you're gonna add different dilutions of vitamin C. You're gonna start low at about 5%. And then you're gonna up that to 10 every two weeks. So you'll go start at 5%, after two weeks you'll go to 10%. And when you hit 10%, you hit that therapeutic range of vitamin C. Uh, and you can go up to 20%. So you wanna be within the range of 10 to 20%. And I generally recommend uh, increasing 5% every week until you're within that 10 to 20% range. Now, sometimes vitamin C can cause stinging or redness. And if that's the case, go ahead and lower the dilution back down. If you have sensitive skin, you can test it on your inner arm before applying it to the face. For the serum to be effective, the pH needs to be between 3.5 to 3.0. Make sure it doesn't go below 3 as it can be irritating or damaging to the skin. And to check the, the acidity, generally you just want to use a pH strip. Now what I found with my vitamin C serum is that mine has a pH of about 3.2, which is perfect. It's right in that range. But if you find that your blend is too acidic, you can add just a pinch of baking soda. If you find it's too alkaline, so that would be above 3.5, you could add a pinch of citric acid until you get it just right. So here are the specific dilutions of vitamin C for the skin. We also have the recipe and chart on our website at greenpathherbschool.com. So if you don't wanna write this down, you can just head on over there and get this whole chart and the recipe online. The vitamin C serum is best used nightly after cleansing and toning and before you apply a moisturizer. If desired, you can use it all over your body, focusing on problem areas such as dark spots, acne, scars, and the face and hands. Simply shake well before applying as the vitamin E, especially if you're using an oil, oily vitamin E, won't dissolve well into the formula. It's always good to shake a, a liquid formula first. And then you can just spritz it. If you're gonna use a spray bottle, which works really nicely, you can just spritz that right on the body. You wanna make sure you store it in a cool, dark location, such as a medicine cabinet works fine. The recipe has a shelf life of about three to five days. If the serum begins to rise, if it turns yellow, or if the pH rises over 3.5, make sure you discard it and just make a new batch. And any extra that you have of this original um, antioxidant serum, keep that in the refrigerator. I hope this recipe will help your inner beauty shine out through your skin. And remember, true beauty comes from the inside. It comes from our actions and our interactions. I hope you'll check out my book, you can find lots of other recipes and herbal information on our website. I also put up a new Pinterest board of some really fun free labels you can download and print out for your, for your herbal recipes, you know, whether they're body care or not. And that's at pinterest.com slash greenpathherbs slash boards slash. We love to hear what you think. Please leave your comments below the video and thank you so much for watching.